Uh, Darker Dreamer says the music was loud, um, but everything else was good. So let's try it again because I just adjusted it. Hello and welcome to the Ritual Misery Podcast, episode 137 for Thursday, the 10th of August, 2017. This is a show where two lifelong friends and their guests celebrate all things geek, except this week you don't have guests. So Kent, you're my guest this week. How you doing? <laughs> yeah, I didn't hear anything you just said. It all uh, it all just cut out. <laughs> like, not even kidding. Dark Redeemer says it's much better, but I didn't hear anything you said. Yeah, for, uh, music is just killing everything. It's like overriding all the other tracks, I think. <laughs> <laughs> But no, I said uh, I, I'm really glad the week is almost over. I agree. <laughs> <laughs> I don't. I don't. I don't know what else you want me to say. To that I just uh, oh. this you know, week. You know, we we all love our IT guys, right? I mean, you kind of need them, right? I mean, sure. But sometimes sure. they're just douchebags. You're like, I don't know. I could do your fucking job, dumbass. You know, right? Um, I, but I, no, I could do it uh, at least as good as you do. <laughs> yeah. Well, man, my IT guy at work has been on leave for the last two weeks. Oh. And uh, holy crap! How's how's that doing for you? No, not so good. Yeah. It's, uh, um. So are, are you uh, are you are you like uh, touching your fingers and uh, t- to your tongue to wet them out and then kind of touching stuff inside just randomly hoping it'll work? Because <laughs> because I think that's the point where you know something went wrong. <laughs> oh jeez, man, it's. Uh... It's so bad, dude. Like, for, so for two weeks now, I've kind of been like the, like, oh, IT isn't here. I guess somebody's got to do it. So I got to go do the thing. And this dude apparently does so much shit. <laughs> I can bear, I barely have time to do my own stuff. And the, the last two weeks have been a couple of the busiest weeks uh, as far as like things going on in the office. And to not have the IT guy, who boy. It's it's uh, been a trying time. Yeah. Uh, yeah. How's, how's your week been? <laughs> um, very busy. Uh, so the guy that I replaced left. He's he's gone, which means that now he's there's no crutch there anymore. There's no and so nothing against the guy. He handled his business very well, but he did it all himself. So that means, oh, that's right. All of the the trailing or all the tracking on everything that was going on is all in his email. Mm. It it wasn't in a public place where I can access it. So I'm basically having to redo a lot of stuff and rebuild products and rebuild uh, 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 packages and everything else. And yep. um, I I I would say it's my favorite thing, but it's not. It's just, it's not. (laughs) Um. Yeah, no, I, I totally get that. Every time I take a new job, that's kind of that's kind of how it goes. Yeah, um, a little bit annoying, but overall, uh, not too bad. Now, Amber and Ashley left last week. That's why I couldn't be on the show. I had to take them to the airport. Uh, uh, so I tried to I tried to time it so they go they would stay here as long as possible, and then go back the day that registration started. Mm, you know, mm-hmm. so they'd be there for a school registration. Well, we missed it by one day, and I missed the podcast. So, yeah, uh, kind of a double on that, but whatever. Um, there was no way of telling until they'd release the schedule, which they didn't do until they were here. Um, oh. But me, me and Amber, uh, me and Amber and Ashley, we, well, so me and Ashley the first day, and then me and Amber the next day, we went on our, like, a little adventure, like a daddy-daughter date, right? Um, me and Ashley, we went out, we had a good time, we did a little shopping, we had lunch, and, you know, this and that, and then we, we came home. No big deal. I, had a, I actually had a phone call that night um, about something we're going to talk about later. And the next day, I took Amber out. Mm. Now, she wanted to talk about breakfast. We went and ate talk about breakfast, and we went to the gun range and fired some guns for a little while and had some fun out there blowing rocks into smaller rocks, because that's how white people, rich people do it. And... Uh, <clears throat> That was that was a lot of fun. We left there and we just kind of goofed around all day. A couple of things of interest though for the rest of that day. One, we found a comic book store. It's been here for two and a half years. It's the second one. The first one has been here for 30 years, and I hadn't heard about it until that day. 
Never heard about it at all. This hmm. place is amazing. So it's got like uh, a couple racks of comics, I guess. Uh, a, a couple, a couple per square foot. It's got, <laughs> um, you know, the comic comic book stores we used to go to. Like they had this huge comic book store, and it's like all back catalog and like one tiny little row of new shit. Like, oh, this is what happened. This what came in this week. Everything else was blah, 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 blah. right. Yeah. No, this place was like getting generous copies of every comic I've ever heard of. Like it was insane. Um, and they had a back room, so if it wasn't, didn't have room on the shelf for a specialty item, whatever else, they had like a little back room that, that they could go into and pull like onesie twosies out. Like it was, it was, in, it was awesome. Manga, they had an entire wall of manga, like this wall. It was, it was great. It was awesome. Uh, uh, Amber loved it. I haven't taken the other kids. I think I'm going to take them Saturday morning, actually. And uh, yeah, that was pretty awesome. Um, That's pretty. Sweet. Man, I wish I had a comic book short store here. Even one with just a couple racks would be a welcome yeah. thing. This was this was a pretty good sized store. It wasn't like a Walmart or anything. But it was a pretty good sized store. And then it had two rooms off the side of it. One room was a sports memorabilia room, like you know, you get your sports cards and all that kind of stuff. Your your signed baseballs by uh, uh, Hank Williams Jr. or whoever the hell signs baseballs. I don't know because baseball is <laughs> dumb. The next room over was a game room. It had everything from Munchkin to Dungeons and Dragons to Firefly, a bunch of card games I'd never heard of, uh, uh, dice games. It had um, every Catan er, that it was no, ever just, imagined. D- just games for sale or the like a space where people can play? Uh, well, I haven't got there yet. So that was... that was, <laughs> And they had magic. Like magic. Oh, they have magic tournaments three times a week there. Oh, wow. did I mention that they have a game room where you can actually go and play the games and they have a set schedule. So it's a seven day schedule. Like Sundays is free day. Like you can go in there and play whatever you want. Then every other day of the week has two categories that you can play in. So magic is there like Monday, Wednesday and Saturday or something like that. Have it's got to be Friday because Friday night magic is nationwide. I, I, I haven't played magic in, in a decade, so I couldn't tell you. But um, yeah, it, it was it was nuts. It was great. And the prices for being in Alaska, the prices weren't too bad. I mean, you know, all the comics were being sold for co- for for cover price, of course. But um, as far as like the collectibles and uh, they had, they've got the racks of vintage video games in the back. Vintage meaning like NES and Genesis, that kind of stuff in the back. And it was yeah. really cool. The only thing they didn't have was a place to play them. You know, <laughs> <All right. laughs> like uh, drop a quarter and play that shit. But. Believe it or not, finding a, a amazing an, an amazing comic book store in Anchorage after being here for over a year isn't the best part of that day. Wow, okay. Um, I think that that'd make my day if I found a store like that. It would have had we not just prior to that gone to a used bookstore. Okay. This is one of those little corner marts. It's one of those little strip malls. You just got racks and books, and they're kind of organized somewhat. I found some Dragonlance books after probably 30 minutes of searching. Amber found one book she was going to buy. It's some psychology book. She enjoys that shit. Okay, cool. Um, we go to buy it, and as we're waiting... Well, first of all, we're, we're browsing the aisles, and we're ready to check out, but the lady's on the phone. She's on the phone. She's on, you know, like, oh, like old-style hel- held phone, like the... You know, uh, yeah. um, like the ones where you hate one eight hundred numbers, you know, because you got to like keep going around, oh, and right. around like, rotary seventy four. Uh, maybe, maybe. I mean, the, she she might have been uh, um, McDonald's vagina lady's younger sister. Like it was. Uh, <laughs> so this is my, my my grandma is when she <clears throat> excuse me when she upgraded to a, a push button phone from rotary phone. She kept the switch on pulse. So still, when you would push a button, like you pushed an eight, mm-hmm. you pushed the eight. <laughs> Ain't got no time for tones. She's not trying to call a music store. <laughs> <laughs> but the fact that the lady's on the phone is, isn't like the most amazing part. She's actually talking about her medical history with a lady on the phone, and she's trying to obscure everything. So... Of course, in my mind, when you're trying to not say what the medical problem is, but you're talking about this family history of it, and you think your dad had it, and he did this, and he and start throwing out guesses. Yeah, and, and it's always the worst case scenario. Like, oh, she's got fucking schizophrenic dementia, right? <laughs> it's colon cancer. It's colon cancer. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing that mundane. At one time, I thought she had an STD. You know, like, 
<laughs> especially, no. especially we just talking about her dad had it too. I was like, oh, that's got to be it, right? STDs all the way. Um, but she, <laughs> she's on the phone for like half an hour. Like we're ready to check out, right? As she and before she was on the phone, she was talking to her bird. She had a bird in a cage, a single bird. And every once in a while, it would tweet, but all the time that it wasn't tweeting, she would sit there and go, "Shh, you shut it, you shut it, you keep quiet, you shut it, you shut it." And then she'd stop saying anything, and then the bird would tweet, and she wouldn't like hush the bird as soon as it tweeted. She'd wait like two or three minutes, and then she'd start hushing again. And sometimes the bird would just tweet while she was hushing it, and she had changed nothing. Like this lady was out. <laughs> oh my god. So I, I mean, I went one way, Amber went another way. We were kind of just hitting the bookstore, you know, because the aisles aren't big enough for for either one of us to walk down. Like they're 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 crammed together really tight. So both of us, it, it, there's no way. Um, we're trying to check out. The lady finally gets off the phone. As soon as she gets off the phone, me and Amber basically run to her to check out. She starts telling the story. I was like, hey, you know, nice story you got here. And just, just, just trying to make small talk. She's like, yeah, we got pushed out over here because we were next door, but then the pot store is going to go next door. And they, they pushed whoa. us over here. Like, oh, whoa, 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 whoa. Just, just want to buy one book. Just one book. <laughs> can, we, can we do that? As she's going on about how she got pushed out because of the pot store, which is legit. I looked over the, the little notice to the public is right there on the door saying that it's going to be a pot store and, you know that. Um, that was worded pot store. <laughs> it's it's like, like marijuana, I mean, marijuana distribution point or something like that. Oh, okay. I was picturing like flower pots no, or uh, no. like pottery, like uh, like a craft shop. I mean, it, it might be eventually. <laughs> 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 um, no, no, no. It was it was it was much better than that. Um, I'm looking around while she's telling the story, and I don't see credit card machine. Oh God. <laughs> I look at the door. There's no little visa accepted here. Uh, yeah. Uh, and I'm just thinking, oh, she's going to break out one of those big chunk, chunk, you know, those, those. <laughs> <big> <laughs> yes. Last time I saw one of those. And the only time I've ever actually used one myself was when we were getting gas and just outside of Memphis, when you and Chris and me and Lisa like split off after, <laughs> after doing like Christmas in Indiana or something like that. Yes, um, yes. That was the last time I've ever even seen one. And this is the only time in my life I've personally ever used one. But I expected her to like reach under the counter and grab this big junk junk. Man, I was I was prepping for it. I was I was about to tell Amber about it and everything. I was like, oh, watch this, watch this. She looks at she goes, We're cash only. <laughs> wait, Would wait, wait. <laughs> Do I? Would you take some pot? <laughs> 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 She's cash only. Okay. Keep that in mind. Remember that she's selling books at a bookstore and she's cash only. Yep. Yep. Okay. The total comes out to $7 and 50 cents. No taxes. Cause we're in Anchorage. There's no sales tax in Anchorage. Okay, cool. Let's go grab an ATM. We'll come back. We'll get the book. We'll, get, we'll be out of here. So I go to ATM. I pull in to the end direction on the drive up ATM at the same time that this lady walks out or pulls out of the bank and goes the wrong way into the ATM. So her passenger can use the drive up ATM. You know what? It, that's not even a big deal. I'm cool with it, except this parking lot and this drive through is really small. So I have to like basically really get in there to where I'm going to have to back up and do some Jimmy and in to get my, the back end of my truck off the road. Because <laughs> it, it, you know, okay, fine, fine, fine. She doesn't pull close enough for her passenger to use the ATM from the car. So she has to get out, the, the passenger has to get out of the car to walk to the ATM. It's like a step and a half to the, so she, she uses the ATM. She gets back in the car and they pull off. And of course the, the driver's scowling at me the entire time, even though I'm, I've completely moved out of her way. I, I am zero inconvenience to her at all. Mm. In fact, you're enabling her. Right. I'm, I'm actually like probably slowing down traffic for her to get out is what's happening. Um, right. I, I pull up to the ATM and of course I'm in, I'm in the truck. So I got like, like basically climb out of the window to get to the ATM. Cause it's down there for like, you know, I don't know, centras or some shit. And, <laughs> uh, <clears throat> uh, dark redeemer would love this one. Cause it was really low to the ground. Like, like, <laughs> like his car. Um, I see that because like, I, it, <laughs> He, he was nice enough to drive me around South by like, it was amazing. I was very thankful, but every time I got into or out of that car, I was like, Oh my God, I'm going to die. Like my knee is just going to pop right out of socket. I'm dying right here. Um, 
<laughs> so um, we pull up. I'm, I'm, I'm reaching down, getting the cash, and she left her receipt in there. She pulled out $20. She had $3 or something like that left in her account. Okay. Did you need to stop by the ATM to pull out your last 20 bucks? Okay, whatever. Fine. More power to you. Not everybody has a bunch of money in the bank. I get it. I pull out the 20 bucks. As I'm pulling out this 20 bucks, I'm thinking, man, I'm going to get back more in change than this lady has in her, uh, in her account. I'm kind of feeling bad at this point. Like I'm, I'm, I'm the fucking WPR guy. Like I'm, you know, fuck on me. Right. So that leads into going back to the bookstore. It's two blocks over. We go over. We already know how to get in there because it's kind of, it's a one-way road. So you got to kind of, and there's not like, there's the, there's not like a driveway. It's like, you know, road parking lot, you know, it's, it's one of those little deals. It's got like, it's got a light pole in the way. Like you can't even overshoot it because you'll hit something. It's, and of course yeah. I'm in the truck and it's meant for like, I don't know. It's like a bicycle parking lot because it's just fucking tiny. So I pull in and we hop out the truck. We go back in the store. <clears throat> we go in there and we're like, hello, ma'am, we're back. And she goes, oh, I was like, we're here to get the book. She was like, what book? There have been no other customers the entire <laughs> time we're in there. We were gone maybe eight, 10 minutes. Yeah. She doesn't remember what book. I was like, the blue one right in front of you. She goes, this one? <laughs> okay. Like okay. I think the wrong one. Yeah. Right. The correct book for you. <laughs> We forgot the wrong, or we we're we're remembering the wrong book. That's what's happening. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so she has to look inside the book again at the price. The price remained the same. It's still a a, a pencil written seven dollars and fifty cents for this hey. night, for this nineteen forty three psychology book or whatever. Oh wow! Okay. okay, cool, cool, cool. She's forgetful. I get it. She's old. She's forgetful. She's probably about ready to talk to the same lady she just talked to. Um. So she goes, okay, that'd be $7 and 50 cents. I'm like, great. Got you covered. I pull out a crisp $20 bill. Uh huh. I hand her the 20. Can you guess what her next words were to me? Do you have exact change? Close. She goes, she says, oh, oh, geez. Ah, <laughs> I don't know if I can, if I can change this out. <laughs> bravo old lady bravo and, and 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 the best part about it in my mind she's standing in front of this old style like you know the big the big number things the cash register like it's not a digital cash register it's like chichunk chichunk right this is the episode where i make all the noises um <laughs> so so she didn't use the cash register at all she reaches down into her purse and starts stealing out change out of her purse I'm not making this up. I have a witness. She's literally like digging. She's like, where are the quarters at? Like, a witness. <laughs> I'm like, you own, <laughs> you're in a bookstore selling books for under $10 and you don't have change for a 20. Like, should, should we go buy, find $12.50 of books? Eventually she found it. Eventually she dug like the very bottom of her purse. She had like this wad of cash. Like she was hiding it there. It was just ones and like, oh, she, man. so my change, my change was literally a five dollar bill, seven one dollar bills. Even though she had tens, couldn't do that. So a five dollar bill, seven one dollar bills, two or two dimes, a nickel, and a quarter. Ugh. So after going through all of that, the the comic store was a little a little washed out. <laughs> and. Yeah, what the hell? You know, those <laughs> those old style credit card things where you like you imprint the card. Mm -hmm. When I was a kid, the first time I'd ever seen a, a credit card being used, I was probably like six years old or something like that. And my dad was using like a Sears card or some crap. And they use that ka -chunk. <laughs> I thought that the numbers imprinted on the card were somehow like a code that like had your balance. Like I didn't understand the the concept of credit. Like I, I thought of it more of as a, a like a debit card. Oh yeah yeah yeah. Had money in there, 
and I thought the the numbers on it were like a code that indicated what your balance was. And when they did that thing on the machine, it changed the numbers on the card. That's what I thought was happening. Wow. No, that, that would have been great. Yeah. So it took me a while to figure out like how all of this crap worked. So, so the only time I've ever used it was the one in Memphis. And I say that I used it, not that I just handed my card over. The attendant was this old man who couldn't get it to slide right. So he actually oh, yeah. handed it to me. I, I don't know if you remember. He handed it to me. He said, here, can you get it to go? And I physically chunk chunked my own card for gas. <laughs> <laughs> like I, yeah. Yeah. So that was, that was the, that was Amber's last adventure in Alaska before, uh, <laughs> before he packed up the next day. Went home. <laughs> oh, and then, then at the airport, they were at the airport, they were on the plane for two and a half hours before they finally took off because the cargo door wouldn't, wouldn't give them the light upstairs. Wouldn't give them the sealed light. So me and Rick sat sat there and ate. We ate dinner. We had a beer. Like <laughs> waiting for them to leave. They wouldn't let them off the plane. It was a full flight. So you know it was just completely miserable in there. God. Uh, and they then they, and then, the huh? I hope they at least had the engine running. No. No, they had the APU on, but the APU doesn't doesn't give up enough air for everybody. They didn't have ground power or ground air hooked up. I looked. Like th- this is the bad part about being a maintainer. Like <laughs> you, yeah. you know what to look for. And you're like, oh fuck that. Yeah. Oh yeah. It's really bad. You start noticing like missing rivets mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. things like that. You're like, there's ten rivets and missing. You, you notice an open panel in flight. <laughs> uh. <laughs> uh, I I like to freak freak people out though because I'm always nervous on planes. It's like just something that happens, right? I, my anxiety level starts ramping up. So I like to make other people nervous to make myself feel better. <laughs> Probably not the best thing to do in an airplane, dude. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> so, so when, when like you're coming down, the flaps are going down, and you go the sound, you know. I'm like, oh, oh, that's happening again. <laughs> <laughs> and then, of course, right after they lowered the flaps all the way down, or at least you know most of the way down, is when the gear comes out, and that's like junk, boom. Like you can, if you're sitting in the middle of the plane, you can actually feel the the shake real quick as the gear free fall. Right. And th- when that happens, I grab the seat in front of me. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah. <You're> next. I, <laughs> I don't, I don't, I, I don't have a response to that. <laughs> oh boy. So, that's been, so, uh, well, the, so th- that's the, what I do to relax on planes. What do you do to relax? <laughs> <laughs> well, um, <laughs> Oh my God. No, I was just about to say the funnest thing I did this week was something that's going to help me relax for the rest of the summer and hopefully through the fall. Uh, I've been talking about the last few weeks, building a backyard movie theater. (coughs) Finally completed that project last night. Mm. And I have a fully functioning backyard movie theater now. And of course, we had to test it out. And um, I grabbed the the closest Blu-ray to me, and it happened to be Avatar. The uh, 2009 uh, James Cameron Avatar, and uh, man, I've heard, I've heard I mean, of it. Say, yes, I mean, say what you want, or you know, chat can say what they want about the quality of that film. But I tell you what, that movie is gorgeous, and it looked freaking awesome hmm. on my uh, on my um, uh, makeshift screen. I guess we're using like a we're using a, a king size white sheet that we have like on a. Um, uh, we've got it all, all hung up all fancy and everything right. and it's uh it looks really nice you, you, need, you need to get some bungee cords mounted to it you, you get that wrinkle out of there yeah so so what we did we we put some rivet or not rivets um um grommets grommets metal grommets at, along the top of the of the sheet and we have it suspended on hooks so it's nice and taut on the top and then we have a like a, an eight foot pole that's in the bottom, like a wooden pole mm. in the bottom, like kind of sewn into it. Right. And so it provides weight. It also gives us something like a, a method of rolling it up when we're done using it. And, uh, that works pretty well, except it would have been a lot better if it was a nine foot pole <laughs> because it does create these little like, uh, irregularities in the, uh, in the tautness. <laughs> oh, um, so man. we, 
by it a little bit, but um, it actually it, it it's really nice, and I'm really looking forward to breaking in and breaking it in for real mm. with the party. We were planning to do something this Saturday. We were gonna do um, like bad movie double feature. We were gonna watch uh, Troll Two and mm-hmm. The Root, which are arguably two of the worst movies ever made. And it was gonna be awesome. And then we checked the weather today, and um, yeah, it looks like it's gonna thunderstorm. <laughs> So, <laughs> we might have to postpone. Uh, uh, chat realm says uh, irregularities and tautness is my indigo girls cover band. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I actually watched a movie this this the, like last night or the night before last that you recommended that I watched, and I told you how I'd feel about it. And I uh, I I, I, I mm, I'm going to tell you the tell you the name of the movie, then you tell me what you remember about what I said I would feel about it once I watched it, and then I'm going to tell you how close you are to both what I said I would feel about it and how I actually felt about it. Okay. Okay. What was the movie? Kong Skull Island. Oh, I don't remember even talking to you about this movie. Mm. So, uh, <clears throat> good. Well, prediction. My prediction. Because I said that I enjoyed it because it's a monster movie, and I just I love like kaiju movies. Like they're just mm-hmm. there's just something about them. giant monsters. It's awesome. Um, I don't know how I would have predicted you would feel about it. Uh, you probably wouldn't be as excited as me. Um, but still, it's like a I don't know visual thriller. I guess I don't know. I don't know. How did mm-hmm. you feel? <laughs> I told you I'd hate it. Okay. Okay. I because I I I don't like Kong or Kaiju. It's not it's not my thing. Um I I figured it is a, a stupid premise. It was not a whole lot of people in it that I was actually looking forward to other than Samuel L. Jackson. Um mm-hmm. and it, it just I didn't I didn't think I'd care for it at all. Mm-hmm. Um we were both wrong. Okay. In different so you, ways. You enjoyed it then. Um, I enjoyed the beginning. the The actual premise of the movie was great. Um, up through up until they flew into the storm. Ah, <laughs> okay. up to all right. So yeah. ten minutes into the movie, <laughs> it's, it's actually like thirty minutes into the movie. Like this, well, it's a lot of build up. Yeah, it's a lot. It's a um, movie. so it, from from them from the storm from them flying into the storm until, um. Until the final battle, the big final battle. Okay, well, I, I, I'm, I'm, I'll tell you what. From the time they fly into the storm until Kong squashes Samuel L. Jackson's character, I fucking hated it. I hated it. Hated it. It was awful. That whole period. And this is Samuel L. Jackson's one of my one of my favorite actors, and I fucking hated him in this movie. He he did a great job. Yeah, I he did. was a though. Like he was the the shittiest person. Yes, yes, in every way. He was he was so I hate movies where there's just that one guy that keeps fucking things up for everybody else. <laughs> yeah, like, it, was, it's just it's like my least favorite thing in the fucking world. Like I get I get anxiety on how much I hate shit like that. And that's <laughs> what this movie was for a large part of it. Um what's the dude's name that was that was there the the pilot guy that crashed or whatever? Oh, John C. Riley. Yes. Oh my god, such a perfect role for that dude. <laughs> Holy shit. Like he played it, it was he he took he he took a, a serious situation, added a jovialness to it with just enough seriousness that you kind of like you, you you kept involved with him. A bit crazy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's he's a little off, but he's still there, you know? He's still valuable. And he played that perfectly. Um but yeah, from the from the storm to the squash, I was just fucking done with that movie. Hated it. God, I hated it. <laughs> um overall, I'd give it an even. Yeah, yeah. I wouldn't watch okay. it again, but I'm I, like the beginning. I would watch again, and then I'd leave when the storm happened, and go have a beer, um, uh, like suck a donkey dick or something like that, and then come back. <laughs> right, right. As Samuel L. is no longer in the movie. Do what? This is basically the same. I mean, just one of those. Um, I mean, I mean, I've never done one, so at least it'd be exper- <laughs> experiencing something new. Dude, I'll have to. I'll have to treat you to a beer one of these days. <laughs> <laughs> Takes more than one. Um, <clears throat> 
<laughs> so, <laughs> oh, dude, kaiju movies are are perfect for like my backyard theater because it's it, it's perfect for you know you don't need to watch these movies really you just need to have them on and something just you know interesting right. and be the to you know that catches your eye while you're having a conversation. It's like the slideshow uh, at a farewell or retirement or whatever. Sure, yeah, I mean, a- Avatar was a perfect example of that. And I think any of these kaiju movies, uh, King Kong, Skull Island, or Kong, Skull Island, whatever, I think would work very well in that Something I did like is how they tied it in to possible other movies. Yeah. I'm, I'm going to be just as unexcited about those as I was this. <laughs> but I enjoyed how they tied it in. They kind of, it was like a little, a little bit of an afterthought, but they, and they didn't like go into it. They're just kind of like, oh yeah, by the way, here you go. Here's a little, yeah, yeah. you know, just in it, case. It, 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 it's it's in the same universe as as uh, Godzilla movie from um, uh, a couple years ago, and there's gonna be a Godzilla two, and then there's gonna be Kong versus Godzilla, and um, you, you, all kinds. You, you, <laughs> so um, yeah, yeah, it works out. Something uh, something I've been meaning to mention, man, and I'm actually yeah. gonna gonna bring this up. Okay. We've had a little bit of a snafu. In our Patreonism. Patreonism? Yeah, sure. I, I said that right, right? <laughs> we'll, we'll roll with it. <laughs> uh, yeah, so uh, Snafu, what, what, what are we looking at here? We lost a couple patrons. Yeah. Yeah. Four, four to be exact. Four. Um, and, and I want to take this time not, not to pimp, hey, everybody should go be one of our patrons. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you mean like we normally do? Right, right. Yeah, yeah I want to I want to keep it a little little different this week. Um, so if you are a patron, I want you to know that we really, really appreciate what you're doing for us. That you're helping us out. You're getting us uh, uh, uh getting uh, uncompressed theme music and microphones and stuff like that to just do this better. That's what we're doing. If you had to drop out for whatever reason, uh, there's a couple people that 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 you know were did, did the declined. Um, which can be any number of things from uh, actually canceling your card to maybe the uh, maybe the, the 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 gift card you found in the Walmart parking lot that you used to fire up the Patreon ran out. You know, it could be any number of things. Um, whatever for whatever reason, we really appreciate what you've done for us. And if you can't come back, we understand completely. Um, that being said, if you've never helped us out on the Patreon, now's a good time. We're down a couple. <laughs> yeah, and actually, uh, I want to I want to piggyback just a little bit on the um, um, uh, you know patrons leaving for whatever reason. Uh, please take the exit survey. Yeah, let us know why uh, why you're not a, a patron anymore. Um, not you know we're not going to razz you. We're not going to call you out, and um, you know we're definitely not going to make you feel bad because you did something for us. That was awesome. Right, right exactly. But, but we would love to know uh, you know why you left, just so. You know, maybe you couldn't afford it. Maybe it was something that you know we're just not doing right, and um, we can improve on it. So, yep. So yeah, hook us up with those. So, awesome, man. Um, for those that don't know, it's it's uh, Patreon dot com slash Ritual Misery. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, oh, that's what I should be doing while I'm, while you're talking. I should be copying and pasting shit in the <laughs> in the chat room. Um, yeah, that's uh. Yeah, oh, yeah. Thanks, thanks, Wabbit. Uh, he says we suck anyway. Uh, well, I mean, you know, but, but we're good at it, though. I mean, we're oh, we're good at it. Yeah, yeah. yeah exactly what I was gonna say. Uh, <laughs> so, man, um, I got one one word for you. Okay, Jakaris. Oh my God! So we we haven't talked about Dra- uh, Game of Thrones in two weeks. Uh, first <laughs> of all, if Dra- we, <laughs> do what? You almost said Dragonland. <laughs> Look, man, don't don't uh, don't don't fuck with me right now. I'm talking about. Dra- uh, uh, I'm talking about the Thrones. Um, <laughs> the Throne game. We're talking about the Throne game. Um, th- it's been two weeks since we talked about it. There's the big HBO hack. I don't want to get into that because it, it, it's just it's so involved and, and uh, it's not really nerdy or techy. It's kind of just a bunch of people being dicks and trying to ruin shit for everybody else. So um, I... I <sighs> Well, I don't even know what to say for the last two weeks of Game of Thrones, except holy shit. I I basically only have two things to say. Um, one, Olena Tyrell. Oh, we and haven't I, talked about that yet, have we? I spoke about that last week. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Solo. Um, 
wow, what an amazing scene. What a what an amazing actress, amazing character. She's perfect, and um, I absolutely love her. That's all I'm going to say. I don't want to spoil anything for anyone who is not caught up. Um, right, unlike Kong. <laughs> right, yeah. <laughs> Um, I think I think Samuel L. Jackson dies in at least half the movies he's in, and rightfully uh, so. <laughs> well, he's in like a hundred, what hundred, hundred twenty movies a year. Yeah. Uh, no, but then the other thing that I want to say about uh, Game of Thrones is, um, oh my God, Drogon! Oh my God, amazing, 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 I, did, fucking amazing. Did you watch After Thrones? Uh no the, the the afters the the little thing they do after the HBO if you oh want, on you, H- like yeah. the, it's like five minutes of yeah, yeah 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 except this one was like ten minutes and then they had a a breakdown specifically of the battle that was like fifteen minutes long the stuff they're doing for this show is completely uh, amazing it's literally record breaking if you're if you're to believe what they said um oh, like more more fire than um has ever been filmed for one scene or something like that uh more stuntmen on fire than ever is they they were at 20 the previous record was like 16 so uh, um and yeah then they showed like the scene where they where they did it and then they counted like one two three four and at 10 they're like okay put them out and like everybody re- rushed in from around him put them put everybody out and they're, they're doing such amazing stuff for this this season and this one is actually short it was like only 48 minutes or whatever and it like you couldn't tell, like it was just, it was nonstop. And okay. So, so that scene was amazing, but I have to, I have to bring it to, uh, to my girl. Oh my God. Aria. Holy shit. <laughs> when, when she didn't do a lot she, this episode, she, she, okay. Well, she, she did, but it was very, it was, it was just, a, it was just only one scene essentially. Oh, I see. Oh, you're talking about the, like the fi- Okay. Gotcha. 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 Yeah. With, with Brian. Yes. Yes, gotcha. the, the 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 I don't even, the I don't even, what do you what you you're the karate guy what was the hell that display, display of badassery oh my god the complete what, <laughs> and, and at the end at the end she's sitting there and she's got this huge smile on her face and she's just like oh my god like and then yeah Sans is looking on going oh that's not my that's not the same sister uh, <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> well I saw a, I saw a meme it said uh, it had a picture of Sansa and it says that face when you realize you're the only sibling without superpowers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The only one left anyway. Yeah. Cause, uh, yeah. brand seeing shit. Uh, John can't die. And now, uh, now Arya is like, like swordsman swordswoman extraordinaire. Um, yeah. And, and, and the uh, more importantly though, if you want to talk about looks more importantly, that look on little fingers face. Yeah. This is like, Oh fuck! <laughs> oh my gosh! Yeah, yeah. Something and, and oh yeah, just so so good. And then when uh, speaking of Littlefinger, so something subtle. I'm sorry for non Game of Thrones people. We're we're really geeking out here, but so Littlefinger, being the the fucking slimy snake that he is, he was trying to be normal asshole Littlefinger to Bran mm-hmm. or the Three Eyed Crow. Yeah, and Bran not buying any of his bullshit quotes little finger back to him from like season two or three or something like that. Something that he had said, brand like spit it back to him. That was a, like a secret. See, it was a, yeah. like nobody knew that he was saying this and chaos when, is a ladder. Yeah. Chaos is a ladder. Exactly. And when brand said that little finger was just like, Oh fuck. Okay. Well, um, I'll go now. Yeah. <laughs> It was so crazy because that scene was right after he had just seen Arya, right? Uh, I don't remember if it's before or after. I, I think it was right after. No, no, no. It was it was well before. Oh, it was before. It was, it was before. well before. Because yeah, because the dagger. That dagger too. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. And then and yeah. then he immediately is like, "Oh, it's no use to a cripple." <laughs> and yeah. Oh shit. Um, Amazing. Over just just everything about these shows, man. Every every episode, like I said before, it, it's just so on point. Yep. Oh, and how about uh, uh, the the cave scene? Oh, the crypts. Oh yeah. no no no! You're talking about you're talking about under well, under the, under Dragonstone. The, yes, under Dragonstone. The, yeah, yeah, yeah. The tension so between those two is so palpable. Um, well, and, all I was thinking was I remember the last time John was in a cave. 
<laughs> the the only other time John's been in the cave. <laughs> Uh, uh, both both ways, it. yeah. D- yes. Double entendre on that one. Um, it's <laughs> yeah, it, it, it was it was it was pretty pretty ridiculous. It's really good, really good. So um, that's I don't I don't want to give any give more any more away than we may already have. So uh, there's there's that. Yeah. Let's move on. This is Game of Thrones. Um, so what what else you got, man? Okay. <laughs> I told you I got stories this week. <laughs> uh, treadmill fingers. You know what those are? <laughs> what? <laughs> uh, treadmill fingers are when uh, the treadmill's going and then you get your hand stuck underneath it and the treadmill peels away your skin. That happened in this house. To the youngest member in the house, the two-year-old, my niece, uh, David was supposed to be watching her and he was on the treadmill and he was messing around with Autumn. Uh, all of this is, wasn't supposed to be happening. And uh, Evelyn decided she wanted to see what was underneath. She wanted, I think she was trying to reach underneath it to pick it up because to close it so that they couldn't play on it anymore because they were ignoring her. That's my completely my own conjecture. And she got her finger caught under there and these two fingers shaved like all almost all the way down to the bone. Holy shit. Yep. So that was awesome. Um, that's that's been a, 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 a pretty much ruined all of last weekend. Like it was basically just hanging out, making sure she wasn't getting hurt or anything else. Oh, um, really crazy. So yeah, I mean, well, that sucks. Uh, speedy recovery to her. Yeah, they said it shouldn't take long because the fingers are very resilient and it didn't like do any permanent damage. I'm starting to think, man, she's gonna have different fingerprints now. At least that's but, that's what I was gonna like, say. I saw Men in Black. I was gonna say, is she even gonna have fingerprints? Is yeah. she gonna be a master thief now? I don't know. We'll find out. Only she uses these two fingers, <laughs> which is might have been what she said. Um, <clears throat> oh my! God. Meanwhile, I did spend the weekend since I couldn't go anywhere or anything else. Uh, I did spend spend the weekend doing some home repair, and it's kind of those th- one of those things. Like the summer has been here. We've had guests this entire summer. We've had other things going on. I've had my knee surgery and this and that. So I'm start, starting to really ramp up the, the this home repair, getting ready for, ready for winter. And this house is only like five years old. And holy shit, do you have to maintain a house? This is bullshit. Like houses should be easier to maintain. Like I got, I got, I got, I got doors to, 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 to rig or jig or whatever. I got, uh, I got, I got a refrigerator that, that's, how does a refrigerator just suddenly not be balanced anymore? Hey, I'm fine. And then the next day, er, I'm gimp. Um, yeah, it's, your house is settling. It's oh my god, it, it's floor soon. But I did get the, <laughs> especially the way people walk in this house. Like everybody in this house is a heel walker except for me. So <laughs> I'm I walk around just my just normal. I walk on the ball on the Twinkles. balls of my toe. Yeah, twinkle. <laughs> so I walk around and nobody can even hear me coming. I'm 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 gimping along with with the jacked up knee and nobody can hear shit. Everyone else though, I'm like two floors below. I'm like boom 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 boom. Oh, somebody yep. just somebody just went into the bathroom upstairs, like upstairs, upstairs, you know. Um, so yeah, there's that. But I did get the entire yard mode, and the grass is starting to grow. We got a lot of a lot of sun, rain, sun, rain, sun, rain, kind of thing. So it's really starting to come through. The winter's going to come along and kill it all. But next next uh, spring, fresh uh, fresh canvas to do what we need to do with. So that'll be interesting until my wife finally gets tired of not having a flat yard and wants to spend fifteen thousand dollars, uh, you know, renovating the whole backyard instead of I don't know. Five thousand dollars renovating in the inside, but whatever. <laughs> uh, that's that. And then uh, just a couple more things. And th- these are work related. So um, if you don't like hearing about bullshit at work, uh, feel free to tune out for the next few minutes. <laughs> we have a form forty three. The form forty three allows us access to a certain program. That certain program, we have three people assigned to it. One of them is a civilian. One of them is my coworker, also my subordinate, and then myself. Well, the form requires the primary person's supervisor to sign off on it. <clears throat> the primary person is, is the civilian. The civilian supervisor is me. So this form got kicked back after being routed around for two weeks, got kicked back because it needed the primary, mem- the primary person's uh, supervisor to sign again because it goes the civilian my coworker slash subordinate, then me, and then me again as the civilian it. supervisor. So it's a closed circle that you can't escape. <clears throat> it's, you got it. And, but it took two weeks for them to get it done. Like they, they couldn't figure out why it wasn't signed. It was like, because I've already signed it. And, and that's <laughs> what they would say. They would call me and say, hey, we need you to sign this form. I'm like, I've already signed it. Look in, look in block 14. Like it's right there. I've already signed it. 
And the bad yeah. part is on the front of the form is like the primary person, the alternate person, additional alternates go on the back side of the form. So they actually had to flip it over, like flip over the form to see where I signed it. But they wanted me to sign the front. They weren't being descriptive. I wasn't asking because I didn't know to ask. Like, you know, yes. yeah. we have forms like that at, at my work too, where the same person has to sign in multiple places because yeah. they're multiple roles. And yeah, it can get like, Really? I already signed the damn thing. Yeah, there are yeah. there are some like a, a twenty two. Somebody wants to submit a twenty two and change change a to or change a whatever whatever, and they want to make it better. Yeah, depending on where it's going, it needs different signatures. <laughs> yes. So so if I send it up to headquarters Air Force, it only needs my signature. They trust me as as, a, as in my position. Here you go. It just needs mine. If I send it to um, one level above my base, I have to sign. I, I sign it. I send it to my coworker. My subordinate, she signs it, and then she sends it back to me. I sign it again, and then it goes up. Now, if I don't sign it the second time, it's coming back. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. It needs three oh. signatures, and you can't have two in a row. It's, God, fucking. Right. Yep, yep. Oh, God, you got to love bureaucratic um, red tape. It's, it's just, it's the best. And we're more efficient now than we ever have been, right? No. Oh, you mean the paperless Air Force? mm Really, what's happening is we make electronic versions of all of the paper stuff that we are still doing. Right, right. And then we we add, since it's so easy to route, since we just have to email it, we just add routing to it, more and more routing. <laughs> yes. So you used, to, you used to be able to get away with only two people seeing it. Now 15 people have to see it, and it's supposed to take less time because it's electronic. No. Right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The electronic, what is it called? The E triple S. What is that? E -S. Electronic? Uh, sum staff summary sheet. That's it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. That requires like 12 signatures on a thing that used to, you would just like, just sign it. And you would, done. you would hand it to Jim and he would sign it and you'd be done. And now it's got to get routed through 13 people. Um, <laughs> so, uh, so w w one more thing real quick. I posted earlier today, we went to change a command ceremony. My group changed commands. We went from one commander to another commander. Um, I wow. don't know how to explain this to anybody that's not in the military, except your division boss. Like your, your, you're in the retail division of Sears and that boss changes hands and you, everybody has to go there. Um, yeah. It's just like report instead of reporting to this boss. Now your department reports to this boss. Yeah. This guy, this guy moved over to that department and now you got a new dude in there or chick. Yep. Um, it was supposed to be an outdoor ceremony. It rained today. So we went indoors. I'm sitting there and I had to go and get my hat because we were emulating an outdoor ceremony. Yes. Indoors. Yes. That's that's my favorite. That's my favorite. Especially when you're on the fly line. Was it did this take place on the fly line? Yeah. No. Yeah. And hats are not allowed on the fly line. No. We know this. Yeah. So you leave your hat at whatever office that you have when you go to the flight line. So you mm -hmm. get to the hangar. Oh hey, this is an outdoor ceremony. You need your hat. Well, motherfucker, half of the people are gonna get up to go get their hats because that's important. It's real important and it's lots of fun. To have your hat, I, I'm I'm or I'm sure there's a reason that it was an outdoor ceremony, even though it was indoors. I'm sure there's like some difference in protocol or something. Of command, change of commands, change of command, change of command ceremonies. Let's go with that. Sure, change of command ceremonies tend to be outdoor ceremonies. Uh, most of the ones that I've been to, even though it's in a hangar or something like that, everyone's got their hats on. Right, and I'm sure there's a difference between indoor ceremony and outdoor ceremony. I'm sure, there, sure there's a difference in the calls or who has to salute or they want everybody to salute instead of putting their hand over their heart for the national anthem or whatever they feel like. Yep. I that's, don't that's care. The, I don't I think care. That's exactly what it is. I think it's the saluting of the flag. That's probably the difference. That's. <laughs> <laughs> but hey, hats are fun and they're important. Hats are dumb. <laughs> <laughs> so you stupid. can have my core. Actually, the, the IT, the aforementioned IT guy. Uh, you can ask him about how I feel about hats in the Air Force or in the military in general. What a bunch <laughs> of superstitious bullshit. That's all I'm going to say. Oh, it is It is the worst. I, I, and, I, I, ag I agree that it looks better if you're in uniform, if you're in formation and everybody's got their hat on. I understand. It, 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 just, <laughs> it just for everyday stuff, like stop it. Yeah, stop man, I, I tell you. It, it's so much better to be retired because I'm still I'm still with oh my God, 18 people months. In, in mission and doing things that I think matter.
but I don't have to do any of that bullshit. I, I don't even remember the last time I wore a hat of any sort. <laughs> eight, eight, 18 months or 20 months, whatever it is, and I will be wearing jeans or underwear, but not both to whatever <laughs> my next job is. <laughs> I want the job where it's just underwear. Like, how do uh, I get that? Uh, it, it's what we're doing right now. <laughs> right. But, you know, we'd have to get paid. Like, uh, enough look, 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 man. There's, there's, there's other ways. Um, okay. So my, my last story for the night, and then we'll, we'll go on to a, 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 something else. Um, <laughs> I, I, I know I need to approach this with some sort of, of, of. Decorum, uh, tact. There, tact. There is an individual at work who uh, who works in very close proximity to me, uh, who I will not name, but uh, they are in the middle of breastfeeding, and um, while at work, they do the either the pump and dump or pump and store. I'm not sure. I don't care. Um, okay. And honestly, I'm not there for it because I leave my office every time twice a day so they can do that oh you don't have a there's like not a designated place or like a we're in storm. we're in maintenance and the air force hasn't figured that shit out yet oh they they do here and there's like actually an abundance of those rooms here and it actually pisses people off that there's unused office space because it's designated as a pump room no the, the unused office space is my office <laughs> now, now my thing is the reason why women have uh couches in their bathrooms is so that they can go and do that there but then there's always the well i don't want to do it in a bathroom that's disgusting i'm not going to eat in there sure e e e clean it you're the only ones going in there <laughs> there ain't a bunch of dudes going there be like hey you know what fuck it i'm just gonna piss in here but all over the walls like nobody's nobody's doing that shit like yeah it's yeah well, I mean, I, I I get it. I get it. But at the same time, I mean, you know, it is true that your kitchen is way filthier than your bathroom uh, in right. most cases. Right. Maybe not a gas station but bathroom, but... Either way, if you're doing things, in, like, unless you're rubbing the bottles on the walls, like, it's not going to be an unsanitary, you know? <laughs> tell, me, yeah. tell me you've never breastfed your baby while someone farted in the room. That's the same thing that's going on, you know? It's like, it's, <laughs> like, oh, my God, you farted. I can't breastfeed in here anymore. I got to go somewhere else. Here's the thing, though. Here's, here's my big issue with it. The individual wants privacy. I get it. But we are never going to get rid of this stupid idea that breastfeeding has to be a shameful private experience until it's no longer a shameful private experience. Right. Well, yeah, but I mean, you can't like it's it's not on her to change that, though. No, it's on everybody. Well, sure. But it's, I it's mean, on how do you everybody. Go, how do you go from now to that? Uh. That's part of the problem. And and that's why my issue isn't with the individual. That's why I don't want to call the individual out. It's a societal thing that I just it just pisses me off. Yeah, like yeah. why are we so ashamed and afraid of such a natural thing? Like I think a lot of it is the 20th century um, the sexualization of women. Uh well, I mean that's that's nothing new. That's right. Been around a very long time. No, I just like, I don't think 150 years ago that anyone even gave a fuck about breastfeeding. I mean, it's just what you did. That's how you feed your baby. Right. You know? uh, or even, even let's say 100 years ago, it was probably exactly the same where nobody even gave it a thought. But when we start to automate things, when we start to, um, um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, where you, uh, gosh, God damn it. You know, when you get old and your vocabulary just fails you at the worst times. Now is one of those times. Um, have you seen the like, show? <laughs> um, no, but it, like when, when we want to, um, like uh, I keep wanting to say socialize and that's not the like domesticate, I guess, like remove ourselves from the animals, you know, so right, we, right, right, right processes that like uh fancify us and I, i'm god i have the perfect word but it's 
completely gone from my vocabulary now. Um, but yeah, the, like the 20th century was big on doing that kind of shit. And yeah. it sensitized us to a lot of shit that we basically just made up shit to be sensitive about. And that was one of the things. And it's going to take us a while to get back to uh, basically deprogramming ourselves. Like our, like we're probably like the oldest generation that even gives a fuck about that. Anyone older than us is like, oh, what, what, why would you want to do that? Like they're too programmed. Right. So they're all going to have to die off. We're going to have to die off. And it's going to be like our kids that they're going to see it change. Hmm. That's, that's, my, that's my guess. I mean, if certain world leaders have it, uh, have it their way, we'll all restart the, the whole planet very soon anyway. Um, it's about time we did this, isn't it? Uh, this week's TED Talk. It wasn't a TED Talk. It, it isn't. This <laughs> is not a TED Talk. <laughs> So 99% invisible, mm. which is, uh, and it's not even, it's not even video. It's only audio form. Mm-hmm. Uh, it is a podcast, uh, it, Roman Mars, Roman Mars. Well, okay. So if, if you're, if you're knowledgeable of, of Ted talks, you'll know Roman Mars. Cause he did, he did one on flags on vexil, vexillology. Um, very, very <laughs> famous, famous one. It's, it's really awesome. He is the lead producer for 99% Invisible. In fact, it's his voice that kind of binds the whole show together. And he's got an amazing voice. If, you, if you've never heard it, it's... It, it, in, my, in my mind, it's like the ideal radio voice. Um, it's ridiculously... It's, it's smooth and it's, it's milky. It's <laughs> creamy. It's... it's uh, anyway. Um, <laughs> it's delicious. So, <laughs> <laughs> uh, episode 270 of 99% Invisible is called The Stethoscope. And... Yeah. I wanted to share this one with Kent because I found I, I this is one of my normal podcasts. I love this podcast, but this one it it struck me a little bit differently in how it was presented. I figured Kent might actually enjoy it. Well, and you know, to me it seemed like a typical ninety nine percent invisible, and it's not that like I don't listen to it because I don't like it. I actually really like this show, and the thing about it is the whole idea ninety nine percent invisible. It's about uh, th- like the effort that goes into things that no one thinks about. Right. It's like invisible processes behind shit that you know about or you think you know about. And in this case, he was talking about stethoscopes. Like, of course, like everybody knows about stethoscopes, the thing that the doctor uses. But mm-hmm. what? how did it become what it is and why do they use it and do they still use it? Do they still need to use it? Like, why? And all of that. And yeah, this was pretty fascinating. He went for about uh, 20, 22 minutes, I think. Yeah. Um, They're never more than about 20 minutes. It's, it's yeah, usually pretty it's short. Perfect for my commute. It, it was my morning commute mm-hmm. this morning. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me. But yeah, it was, it was fascinating. Uh, it told the history, where it came from, uh, the guy in the, the late 1800s that, or I'm sorry, uh, yeah, eight, 1800s, right? Uh, I believe so, the early 1800s. Well, anywho, yeah. <laughs> the guy, long time ago, uh, it cr- it came up with this thing. And before stethoscopes, there was no way to see, and I'm putting this in quotes for the audio listener, there's no way to see inside the human body until he came up with stethoscopes. Uh, they used to, like the immediate precursor to that was, um, uh, what do they call it, percussing. Yeah, percussing. Where they, like, tap on the the chest yep to like you know try to hear like what's going on uh but the this guy that invented the set the stethoscope uh realized that if you have like a like a cone-shaped thing uh that goes into your ear and onto the chest cavity you know whether the back or the the front of the chest cavity you can hear in great detail what is happening inside the human body uh, this this actually caused a paradigm shift in that instead of the symptom being the problem, they started to understand that there were things lying underneath that the symptom was yep. just that as a symptom. It wasn't the thing that you were trying to cure. So right. that's why, like, like take fever for example. Uh, fever we know is a symptom. It's you know something. It's a, it's an indicator that something else is going wrong with right. the human body. Where, uh, you know, back then, let's rewind 200 years ago, fever was the disease. Yep. That's why we have diseases named like the scarlet fever and things like that. 
yep. uh, because they, they considered it the disease, not a symptom of it. Yeah. Um, I, I just thought this was really, really awesome in the way that one person's curiosity and a chance encounter with, with a obese patient led to this technological marvel in such mm-hmm. a small scale that has now had another paradigm shift where now it's basically an accessory of authority as opposed yeah. to a, a genuine, really useful tool. I mean, it's still useful, but it's not as useful as it used to be. Right, exactly. It's, it's definitely useful uh, for a couple of things. Uh, uh, it allows for intimate um, contact, conversation, uh, encounter, let's say an intimate encounter, non-sexual, hopefully, <laughs> um, but an intimate encounter with your doctor because a, a lot of a doctor's job is diagnosing mm-hmm. and they tend to do that behind a desk at a computer and right. it, having a doctor, you know, going to a doctor now a lot of times seems very cold, distant, um, impersonal. You just kind of feel like, you know, cattle or, you know, or just a number to them. Uh, but using the stethoscope allows the doctor to come out from behind the desk, um, check you out, talk to you at a, at a closer level, look you in the eye. Um, it, it feels more, you know, we talk about bedside manner. The stethoscope allows that. Um, it also, I mean, it does give the doctor an immediate, uh, like inside view of, of what's going on in your body. Like if you've got a wheeze or your heart beats regular or something like that. And, and keep in mind that a really good stethoscope will cost you like 30 or 50 bucks. Whereas the, <laughs> the next best tool is thousands. Like, <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. It, it tens know, of thousands. Yeah. There, there's the, the, the gap between a, 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 a stethoscope and, and a, a sonogram, sonogram is huge. <laughs> yeah. Is, <laughs> yeah. Uh, um, but really interesting thing to me, because a lot of the first two things that I mentioned seem like kind of obvious. And well, of course. Um, but the thing that was most interesting to me, though, is the one that was unexpected. And that's that a stethoscope is kind of a fashion thing. Mm hmm. Now, it's fashionable. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Is it's a it's an accessory of authority. Like you you wear it more than you use. Well, doctors wear it more than they use it. Yeah. So they, if you do a Google image search, and uh, Roman pointed this out, if you do a Google image search of doctor, you will come up with probably every picture on the front page or or close to it is going to be a white man in a white coat wearing a stethoscope. Pretty like close. It's, it's, Pretty well, close. It's integral to the image that we have in our brain of doctor. Um, yeah. I, I think the the presence of a stethoscope is definitely more prevalent than white man, um, but I would say at least on par with the lab coat. Um, so I'm uh, I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna share this with you right here, and you will be able to see exactly yep. what's going on with it. Um, yeah, I mean they're not. Uh, luckily, I mean you got a you got a cartoon chick, you got a couple Asian or or Indian dudes out of the mix. Uh, there, actually, there's there's a real chick up here. She's right there, the real chick. Yeah, there's a couple there's a couple women, yeah, but it, it's, down there. it's primarily white. But they're all wearing. Well, they're either wearing lab coats or or um, uh, scrubs, and all, every all the one, all yeah, the well, one. one of, about to enter surgery, but all of the rest of them have a stethoscope. Yeah. Um, now, the other interesting thing, like kind of the second part of this, is that if you notice, most of them are wearing it around their neck, as in like the bell on one side and then the the um, ear pieces on the other side of the neck. And, you know, we that's how we think of it now, where it used to be where they would wear it like, uh, like this guy, the old guy there, where he wears like the ear piece things around his neck mm. uh, which is from my childhood that's what I remember my family doctor doing that's how he would wear his uh, yep. kind of like a tie um, what was what was crazy though is they said that the reason that that changed is the, the TV show ER uh, yeah ER and then followed closely by scrubs. Then scrubs yeah and then yeah. scrubs after that the doctors on those two shows wore the stethoscope around their neck in that manner and that's why doctors started to change. It was kind of like, you know, following the trend, following the, you yep. know, the cool fashion. <laughs> and I was like, you got to be fucking kidding me. I'm, I'm, I'm going to go on a limb and say that you got more out of this, out of this, uh, this 20 minutes or whatever than you thought you would. 
I enjoyed the hell out of it, man. It was great. Yeah. Um, and, and this is, uh, this is one of those things where, yeah, we, we like to do Ted talks, but sometimes, sometimes you got to reach outside the box. Something else will hit you with a little bit of inspiration or just a fun story or uh, knowledge in a way that you just didn't expect it. So that was, that was, the, that was this week's Ted talk. Yep. Awesome, man. Um, it's, it's, what else we got going on this week, man? Oh man. Uh, we got to reach out to some people, dude. Uh, we've, we've got like, I don't know, probably half a dozen to a dozen people lined up to be our guests, but we just don't have any of them scheduled. <laughs> so, <laughs> uh, we need to do that. Yeah. Yeah, I definitely, so um, we're not sh- who our guest is next week. Uh, yeah. I mean, other than that, I think, um, uh, and then we do know in two weeks, in two weeks, we have Mark Jelinek. Ah, oh, yes. What is it about the weather? Another, yes. one, another silky smooth voice. Perfect for radio. Yeah. Um, watchers of this show might recall him from your birthday video. Uh, when we had our show during your 40th birthday mm. and I collected videos from people, he was one of the videos. He was the one that filmed himself with lightning, real lightning in the background. <laughs> Yeah, perfect timing. Uh, this dude is a weather nerd, and I can't wait to talk to him. <laughs> so that'll be in two weeks. We're not sure who's going to come on next week. Uh, depending on how, how this one's reviewed, we might just not have anybody next week. We might just start a new <laughs> trend of not having guests and saying, fuck it. Uh, we'll just wait for them. We'll, we'll come online and wait for them to call us. We'll do that. Um, right. That's not a bad <laughs> The lines are open, by the way. Um, so with all that being said, uh, man, it's, it's, been a, it's been a crazy week. We had another crazy week ahead of us. This week, I am going to be... <laughs> Webbit says, you don't need no stinking guest. No, we, we prefer the ones that smell good. Even though it's Skype, we don't care. We, we, want, you to, we want you to have the confidence of smelling good when, you, when, you, uh, when you're on the show. <laughs> <clears throat> so far off the rails. Um, hey, man, uh, it's, it's, it's been awesome. We, uh, where can people find, find you and uh, find stuff and do... Oh, one, one more thing we haven't mentioned. We didn't mention. Okay. One, one more thing. One more thing. Oh, God. Is this an apple? Anyway, never mind. Go, go, go. Oh, go. God. Don't get me started on that. The rumors are wild, and I'm loving every yep. minute of it. <laughs> loving every huh? minute of it. Um, <laughs> Undaunted is on the Gunna Geek Network. Oh, my God. That's right. Yes, yeah. yes. Congratulations on that. That's, yeah. that's really cool. And what struck me, okay, on the way home from work today, I was finishing up the this week's episode of Night Attack, and the next thing I had in the queue was your new episode of Undaunted. So I'm driving down the highway, Night Attack finishes up, and then I hear SP's voice. And I was like, wait, wait, did I screw up my queue? Like, what, what the <laughs> fuck? So I had to actually look down at my phone, which is illegal in New Mexico, to look at your phone while you're driving. I actually picked it up and looked at it and saw that it was Undaunted. Like, what? Oh! <gasps> Oh, that's right. That's right. He's on Gunna Geek Network now. Okay. It made total sense, but I, dude, it seriously threw me way off at first. <laughs> yeah. Um, for, to be on Gunna Geek, you need to do a pre-roll. Uh, they also like you to do a post-roll, but they don't have those up, so you got to kind of make those yourself. Um, and uh, just really awesome. It's, a, it's an awesome group of people, and uh, people like SP and, and uh, 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 Stephen John Drew and, and uh, just all those guys over there and, and gals, they're they're awesome. Yep. They do they do a great podcast. Even though I don't, there, there's a lot of them I just don't listen to because there's like there's three of them just on MCU, not my deal. <laughs> right. um, yeah, there's the Who podcast. There's yeah, <laughs> all kinds of stuff. Man. Um, kinds. But yeah, it's it's it, it's awesome, and I'm I'm proud to be uh, proud to have been accepted to be part of the part of the network, and hoping to really um, have some mutual benefit there. Yeah, very cool, very cool. So, we'll have to get some more of those folks on here as well. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Uh, well, now I have an inside line, so we'll. We might make that happen. Uh, speaking of inside lines, man, if somebody wants to reach out and touch you, I mean, uh, contact you, uh, where, where are they going to really gonna find you at? Yeah, hit me up on Twitter at RM underscore Del Noche. I think lately I've been doing more on Untapped than anything else. <laughs> uh, so follow me there on, at uh, Del Noche on Untapped if you're, if you're a beer person. In fact, just look up Del Noche on just about any medium, and it's probably me that you'll find. Where are you at, man? Uh, I'm on, I'm on Twitter at Ethan Kane. You can also find me on Facebook, but it's basically just a reposting of all my tweets. So, you know, just go directly to the source, go to, go to Twitter, uh, find me on there, hit the old, uh, friend button or whatever they call it now. The, I want to listen to this guy's tweets button. 
and uh, you'll, you'll 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 see some of my inner thinkings. I'm getting a little bit more on there. It's been it's just been crazy. So I kind of took a little bit of a break from everything. Um, and of course, you can find the show at Ritual Misery. You can find everything else that we're doing, all the projects that we're doing uh, together or by ourselves on RitualMisery.com. And uh, cruise on by there. Uh, I got to redesign the the, the 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 page one day, but I just uh, like more. Yeah. So there's all that. Uh, I want to give a big shout out to Kevin McLeod. Uh, we mentioned earlier that he's got awesome music. We, we use a lot of it and he kicks ass. Um, hopefully we'll be get him on the podcast soon too. I just got a confirmation email from him. So um, like <laughs> making shit happen, man. I stay up until two you o'clock in the morning every night. <clears throat> Do he I? never res- <laughs> I said you <laughs> that I couldn't. He never responded to me. Uh, I spoke his language. Um <laughs> Hey, you sent him cash. That's why. I mean, there's that. There's, you know, <laughs> no, nothing speaks better than the language of green. And uh, you can find all of our links, everything else at our website, ritualmisery.com. I cannot, can I get away from that enough? If you want to ca- talk about the episodes themselves, cruise on over to ritualmisery.reddit.com. All of our episodes will feed over there so that you can comment on it. We can see what you thought about it. We can read your jokes or your, your witty comments. If you really want to make some witty comments, go ahead and give us a five-star shitty review on iTunes. Stop by. We've had some great ones lately. I meant to read one tonight, but we're getting a little long. So we might read that next week. If you want yours read right here on the podcast, cruise on over to iTunes. Find us on there and give us a five-star shitty review. And the shittier, the better, as long as it's got all five of them, the golden little stars in there. That's all iTunes cares about. So we're going to make a joke out of everything else. Yeah, um, and uh, while this music plays, uh, any last thoughts? Any last? Uh, any last scotches? Uh, love you guys. See you next week. Music's about to turn up. Here's our cue. Stop talking. Club hopes you have enjoyed this program. <laughs> <laughs>